Shaman in Dungeons didn't change much from previous season, so let's just go straight at it. Start with the stats. What is most important with Shaman is critical strike. Of course, intellect is always most important, but I'm just skipping it because it's always his main stat. It's most important for everyone. So then we have critical strike and regearing new character. I don't have gear yet on Shaman. Good enough, so yeah, don't take note of my stats. So again, critical strike, most important. You can go even to 7000. Easier than that, never go higher than that. That should be enough. It's most important to us because from previous season we started to have mana problems with Shaman and Critical Strike is increasing our heals without increasing our mana consumption like a Haze does. And also with Critical Strike we are regenerating some mana to Resurgence that get nerfed again, but it is what it is. So yeah, Critical all around good stat and the second one for dungeons is definitely versatility, increasing healing a lot and increasing your defensive. But it's also needed because you don't have much defensive on a restoration shaman you have one defensive but it's on quite long cooldown so you can click it once and you don't have anything so very important to have versatility too uh, with the haste uh, ideally like on paper zero is the best but in reality you want some haste to just because everything what is happening with the restoration shaman is just casting you are doing damage you are casting, 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 you are healing, you are just casting, 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 apart from Riptide or two items. So everything with Restoration Shaman is casting. And Haste is increasing cast speed. So you can click more abilities, you can react more, you can... You don't need to plan everything ahead. Everything is just much faster. So think about Haste that you shouldn't have much, but go as much as you feel comfortable. I don't think you should go over 4000. But like I have 3000 now, I think I'm happy with that, but I just need uh, just more critical and versatility and less mastery. So just go how much haste you like. Like 1000 haste and you're good with that, sure. 2000, 3000, however you like, 4000, okay. But just don't go higher than 4000 because then you will have mana issues. And that's quite common thing with the shaman. Sadly, but that's how it is. And mastery, we want just as well as possible basic percentage like I have 28 adding now so base percentage is 25 mastery when you have zero that's really decent do you need more than 25 percent not really no because oh, of course it's not bad but you can have other stats instead of that and mastery is not increasing also damage and you want to do some damage in dungeons and shaman is doing quite a lot of damage you just need to have time for it so depending on that so summary of stats is critical and versatility is primary focus haste as you feel it's good enough you should have low but if you feel you are so slow and you don't have fast reaction time for healing and stuff like that just get a little bit more don't go over 4000 with critical don't go over 7000 and mastery as low as possible of course you have some mastery on set pieces maybe some other gear what is quite wild with restoration shaman or rather any shaman but i would say mostly restoration because left three there is a lot of healing abilities there you have so many options because Shaman had insane amount of utilities and usually when this DLC came out other healers they added utilities to them with Shaman they needed to take it from you and then give you option to have it back in talents of course we have some new one too but most of it we had already we had totems, we had hexes, we had forge, we had uh, what is it? Uh, I don't even know where is that totem. Oh, the Tremor totem it was of, of course always our default kit. Now it's not. So we have so many options, and we need to click our talents and change it depend on which dungeon we are going, and depending on which apex we are playing. So I won't tell you exactly every single choice you have. There is so many. Just try to experiment a little bit. There's also things like uh, preference. A lot of people are going. I even done without shields. More totem recharge even. A recharge one free charge of totem stuff like that just play with it there is not like bad choices okay there are bad choices but it, there's also matter would you like more it's not like this is better for this dungeon okay maybe in paper it's better but of course we are healers we are not dps we are not doing a perfect rotation we need to always wrap what is happening around us so from right tree i want to just mention if you are going lower key you don't need to increase health of your friendly because you won't get instant kill by some huge damage so this is just defensive 
that uh, when some explosion is happening, everybody held 10% more health, so they will survive. Pick that away and put it to Master of Elements on lower key, he will do more damage. Otherwise, I would quite keep it always the same. On the left tree, noticeable changes, we have Tundra Spells, that will break your root when it's entangling affix. Quite important to have, there is Hex, when it's incorporeal, you need to just CC that affix, that's what you are taking for it, and we are going through some stun totem, because you need to get there. Oh, there is other option here, but just lower cooldown or stun totem is just a better choice. Also we have Kursi spell for dungeons like Vekas Manor or Draga Ticket on the end when somebody is not interrupting enough, usually it's not when you're pulling big. And we have Poison Clearing Totem, so for dungeons like Everbloom or Dark Articat, definitely Dark Articat. There is a lot of juicy poisons on the side, of course you can heal it on lower keys, but yeah. There are some important dispels, also this is very important when you have Afflicted Affix, so we need to dispel that goes without any of those affixes, your dispel doesn't work because it's just magic one. Also you can choose Elemental if you need help tongue a little bit or is also your defensive, it will increase your health but 15%, so on higher keys is definitely worth it on some keys. Also, of course, helping tank. And where to get that free talent points on the left tree, uh, one is not actually a like, free point, but you need to take it away when you are sun going big. Because what is Thundershock doing? Your Thunderstorm will knock up enemies instead of knock back. So when you untalent it, then when you have Sanguine and use Thunderstorm, you just push enemies away from Sanguine. Very important. Also, you can use it when you have Spiteful, so when ghosts are chasing you, but usually your slow totem is good enough to just take care of ghosts. So we can get one point here, and then you can just dig in into your air shield. It's nice, nice passive heal, but it's not our main healing. When you are healing, we are healing much more than a shield, but yeah, it's something we can sacrifice in matter of using some different talents we want. Uh, also, we can sacrifice some magic defense, because if you need some utilities, you need some utilities. Uh, or also, if you feel comfortable with your healing, and this is the duration and pull and reaction of, of your totem, so we are mainly speaking about Claw Burst totem. If you think you have enough charges and you don't need to heal more, you can also sacrifice points here, and you can put it wherever. That's more of healing-wise, this is more like defensive-wise, or rather sustain healing so you can have more damage and stuff like that. If you want exactly this talent, the import string is in the description. Let's go on gameplay, rotation, priority, whatever you want to call it. I like you to call it priorities because you can have rotation with healer because you need to react what is happening. Some changes from previous season, not really. We just, previous season was much more important to spread uh, riptides ourselves. Now they are spreading quite on their own if we are healing. If you are not healing, you need to reapply them. Oh. If you are healing just a little, you need to keep reapplying that. The most priority that you shouldn't do when you actually need to heal, but between heals, between running into the pegs and between phases you don't need to heal, just apply air shields. You can have air shield on two targets. It's not like live wound. One target needs to be always you. So always one on yourself, it cannot be somebody else. A second shield can be on your friend. And a second shield should go on tank primary. And if somebody is taking more single target damage, then just use shield on him. For example, maybe somebody get a root on the tree boss in Baker's Manor. And also, when you have shield on somebody, you are increase your healing to that target by 20%. So, it's not only it's healing him in the root, it's also providing 6% defensive, and it's also increasing 20% of your heals to that target. So yeah, usually on tank, when somebody is getting like single target damage more than others, like that single target ability boss on the player, then use it on him. So this is not like a priority one, you should prepare it between damage when running and stuff like that. Our first of most priority is Riptide. Everything everything about Shaman is about Riptide, even more now we have new set piece, but previous set piece was working with Riptide anyway, so it's similar priority, I would say, okay, doesn't care, it's still first one. Uh, what is Riptide doing? It's heal and then healing over time. It's good, keep in mind, it's not like Druid, well, similar like Regrowth. Uh, the Riptide will do more percentage of heal on the initial hit than healing over time. So it's more than 50%. That means if you want to heal the same target just a little, Riptide is already up, just click it a second time, and it's still a decent fast heal. Of course, it's not a preferable way to heal, but if you want to just, if you are running somewhere and you want to top somebody faster, yeah, it's not rejuvenation. You can reapply it on the same target. It will heal a decent number. But if Riptide was only heal, 
only just that, it will be really simple. But let's dig in what is Riptide giving us. One thing what is Riptide giving us is also from Healing Rain, is increasing our healing on the target by 20%. Well, not whole healing, just healing wave, healing, storage, and chain heal. Air Shield is increasing all healing. Uh, Deluge is increasing with our main heal, so only if is maybe not our cooldowns or not our totem is healing them more. But our main heals are increased heal by that. So, every single target that have Riptide have increased 20% healing from our most abilities. And the second, even more important part of the Riptide is Casting Riptide grants you two stacks of Tidal Waves. Tidal Waves reduce cast time of your next healing wave or chain heal by 20%, or increase critical effect chance of your next healing surge by 30%. As we are going for critical strike, 30% increase critical strike for healing surge with our I have a low one, let's say you would have 70% together. That's a huge amount of critical strike chance for a healing surge that will really pump the target up. Also, healing surge is getting buffed in a few days, so nice. But what does that mean for us? That means we want to heal with Riptide because it's just heal, and overtime effect is not that strong, but it's providing our armor bonuses. So we have to have spread Riptide, where we actually need to heal, to spread it before. So it's like first heal where I'm clicking, where we need to heal. Second thing is, you want to, I'm tracking with your aura, you really want to know your stacks of Tidal Waves, because when you're casting any other heal, any other heal, I mean healing wave, healing sturge and chain heal, you should always have stack of tidal waves. Always. Even when you need to overheal with chain heal, then it's costing you or, or casting 20% faster. So that 20% faster cast for twice is worth it that one global cooldown you will use between. So even when you need to overheal on AoE or overheal on single target, cast two spells and reapply Riptide on some target or the same target if it's just only one guy dying and then just keep casting that two spells. Don't cast three of them. Just click on the Riptide and then cast it twice again. So always squeeze between. You should always cast with the buff. Of course, there are situations you know, but you should aim for this. Another reason for spreading Riptide, we have Primordial Wave and when we are using Primordial Wave, we're getting healed to all targets with the Riptide. More about it a little bit later. Now the new set, it will help a lot with our spread of a Riptide. So, what is our set pieces doing? It's if we heal single target or chain heal, the target is getting Tidal Reservoir. That means the target is getting 15% healing from all Riptides. Not so huge in dungeons, but still listen, I have some Atal Dazar logs here. I healed 105 overall, so not that little. It's not a huge deal in dungeons, but it's still something nice and extra because you don't have that many Riptides that in the raid. And the second effect from 4 piece is uh, Riptide's healing is increased by 25% and if Riptide is actually on the same target as Tidal Reservoir, there is that ability that is first target of chain heal and a healing surge healing wave applying, then uh, Riptide's healing over time effects have 6% to just jump on another target. That means your buff will be up, you'll be healing a little and you'll have buff for deluge at 20% of time. So that's quite nice. You usually don't need to pay attention to Guardian Dungeons AI yeah, Seed or virus, but you just heal whatever you need to heal and just spread your Riptide because it's good effective heal on mana and of course also instant. It will just spread on its own. You don't need to pay that much attention. It's a little bit different than in Raid. I usually have it <laughs> almost all the time on most of the targets. Some use that is a little bit extra for that. I don't think game breaking, but a little extra. And also that 25% increase Riptide healing, of, of course it shows. And also that the healing over time effects that applies is definitely I don't think Riptide would be first if I wouldn't have that four piece on me. As I remember from previous seasons, uh, Chain Hill was always the first. So yeah, Riptide is blasting a little bit more. So it's our absolutely base ability. It's increasing our healing. It's spreading. It's our four piece, two piece effect, and it's also our giving or two stacks, which should be always applied on us. Wow. We should always have this buff up when we are using other abilities. After that, we are continuing casting more heals, of course. What else? So we have chain heal or healing surge. What's the difference? It's quite simple. Healing surge is single target, chain heal is multi-target. Healing surge will be buffed again, and also they nerf mana cost a little, definitely to help. So when it's single target, maybe worth it on two target, 
depend on nature damage you are getting right now. But usually chain heal multi-target, healing source single target, healing wave only when you are using primordial wave. Otherwise it's just not worth it to cast in dungeon. Maybe if you have like 5% of mana. There's no more lore here, just pay attention to your stacks from tidal waves and you want to cast healing sword or chain heal to these two stacks so you are consuming them. And after that I put it priority list as third one but it can be second one too. It's primordial wave in healing wave. What is primordial wave doing is applying new riptide, it's also healed a little and in next 15 seconds your Next healing wave will also hit all targets affected by our Riptide. And that's it's 40% of healing. It was 60, but now we got a huge buff to healing wave, so they decrease how much it's spreading. But it should be the same amount of heal. You now just heal a little bit more on the first target, the healing wave. Also, talents here are increasing healing of your next healing wave after that. So it will be even better. So this is another example why spread of Riptide is quite important for shamans because even this mechanic is healing targets but they have Riptides applied on them. Primordial Wave is also quite short cooldown, it's just 30 seconds so you can use it quite often and it's also spreading on the same target you are healing. So even if you are need overheal one target it's still worth to use it because you will heal it with Healing Wave and that 80,000 was 40% from 200,000 so it will be even applied on the same target it's not like beacon of paladin when you are healing target with beacon it's not replicating through beacon because you are healing that target but with shaman primordial wave is replicated on the same target so it's also nice to use it on single target best to use of course on aoe it's just a little bit more mana efficient than just blasting healing soldiers or chain heals then we have another ability and i didn't put it into some priorities because it's not really for healing, it's healing rain. Like it will heal something, look, 500 million. What is also good with the healing rain is that healing rain is also applying deluge on the targets, same as Gliptide. So if people are standing inside the rain, they don't need to have Riptide to have that 20% increase. But usually now with the new set, you usually have Riptides on most of the targets. But what we are doing with the healing rain, we are using it for damage. That's what we are doing with the healing rain. I didn't put it to priority list or healing, but it should be always on the ground. If you have time, always put it on the ground. If you really need to burst healing right now and healing grain is not there, don't bother with that. But if you have time, there is not much happening right now or just squeeze it between because you have one second free window of not healing right now, just put it on the ground. Of course, it will help you with your healing and it will heal something and it's also dealing decent damage. It's huge what it is now because they are also buffed by 10% so it's very decent so summary of our healing priorities we want to have air shield on to target one always need to be us then healing rain I was applied under the enemy mainly for damage but it's also healing don't prepare healing rain but you need to heal right now it is riptide and million mechanics around the riptide then we are deciding if we are using chain heal or we are using healing surge and with that we can also use primordial wave if we have enough riptide spreads on the targets or we need to overheal the one target that already have riptide or other that riptide will be applied without primordial wave then just use primordial wave and follow it with the healing wave when you're following with the healing wave healing wave is usually casting quite long so it's nice to use it with nature swiftness it's also cause no mana but it will be instant cast so you don't spend precious seconds casting just healing wave it will be instant you don't have much things to use for nature sweetness anyway so good combination let's talk now about cooldowns so first one is cloud burst totem same as a riptide it looks like a simple spell but there is a lot of lore about that so cloud burst totem is still vastly superior even they are buffing the other one they are buffing again healing stream to about 12 percent or something like that it's still better it's still much better to them. I was thinking when I seen the updates, they need to buff it at least 100% with like a real world choice between the Cloud Bars or Healing Stream to them. Cloud Bars is just vastly superior. But what is Cloud Bars doing? Cloud Bars is saving percentage of our heals. It counted also over heals, so you don't need to be worried. You are overhealing, it will save your heal. After you click it again, you can release that heal or it will be automatically released on end of the duration. Who will get heal? Heal will be split among everyone that is injured. So if somebody has 100% health, he's not getting healed. 
That means if there is AoE in the group, it will heal as AoE. If you need to overheal single target, it's still a good thing to do. But that single target needs to be only one who is injured, so everybody else needs to be 100%. In that case, every single piece of heal will go to the target. So sometimes when tank is pulling a big pull and there is no AoE during that pull, and I had charged totem already, or I just healed like AoE ended, like in Everbloom. There was an explosion AoE and then no AoE. And I healed to the totem, I saved it there. Nobody else was injured because that was already full. And only tank was getting a huge hit. Because now was both selling. So I just released totem. And tank got million, million two hundred, nine hundred thousand. Huge amount of heal. So it's quite nice to see how it's held in a group. And you can just release totem in that place. Of course it will perish and it will be healed. But usually you want to click it when you want to heal with that totem. Because then it's just usually over heal. Another thing about totem is. It doesn't matter when totem is placed. You can go anywhere, you can go 200 yards away, it will be still saving heals. And same thing, it doesn't matter when you place totem and you're charging it, same thing is happening when you are healing, is healing around you. It doesn't matter where your totem is, it will heal around you. When I place totem, I'll stand around away from it, even more around, I'll reset my locks so I know I heal dummies or myself. And now all the healing should be here and not on the dummies. Bam, I heal that guy for 180. So don't care where the totem is, just click it and you can forget it. It's not like healing tight totem, it's healing around the totem. This one doesn't care. This one is around you. It's just totem because for some reason it's totem, but it's yeah, your buff on yourself. It's nothing to do with mechanics. Totem is somewhere there. Then another things about Clover's totem. We have some cooldowns. Some cooldowns work with the totem, some cooldowns don't. So, we have Ancestral Guidance and Ascendance. If you have Ancestral Guidance, your healing is charging to Clover's totem. So, when you use it together, my totem is getting massive buff, much faster charge than before. But, when you use totem and you have Ancestral Guidance, Ancestral Guidance will not duplicate the healing from totem. So Ancestor Geyser is charging totem, but not duplicating. Ascendance, healing, is not saving to totem, and is also not duplicating. When you explode totem, then Ascendance buff is up. And then it's healing tight totem, and its healing is just not stored again. That means only cooldown that is working with Colbus totem is Ancestor Guidance, and is only charging the totem, that is not working from explosion of totem. Or rather, releasing heal from totem. So that's all theory and in practice you just need to see it yourself. Like Clobus Totem, it's ability I cannot explain exactly. Just use it as often as possible and you will feel, oh now it healed a lot, oh now it didn't heal, oh now I charge it but then there's nothing to heal and it's just over heal. So you will just see for yourself what is best time to use. It's usually when you need to heal some AoE and there is damage after that. So we pop cooldowns during that, even when you use it with Ascendance, it doesn't matter because you will see still healing, so most percentage of your heals will be stored in the totem. And then you will just release, or you can prepare it when there will be some big explosion, but you need to heal it instantly. Like I was doing in Season 1, when the tank got a huge hit and I need to heal only tank and nobody else needed to heal, and I need to heal fast, and then nothing happened. Next 15 seconds, so I place totem and I charge it. And when the damage came, I let it go, and all that healing stored went straight to the tank because it was only one injured. So that's another use of totem, you can prepare your healing and when the burst is needed you will just click it at that point. So usually when he healing a lot, charge a totem, good time to use. Or when you are preparing to heal a lot, basically any time you are healing. Full is no longer, it's 42 seconds, I don't have shortening talent from 45. So just keep placing it, this is something I'm sure you will learn on yourself when you feel it's the best time to use it because there is so many different situations where it's good use or bad use and of course some situation you will just waste it because somebody will use the healing potion or something like that. So yeah, keep using it as often as possible and you will find in a time what is the best timing in dungeons where to use Cold Blast Totem. Finally let's move on to another cooldowns. So then we have Nature Swiftness, 
So next ability is 3 of mana cost and is instant. I usually use it for healing rain because its cast is quite long and I'm casting this every 10 seconds for doing damage. So you can do the same or you can use it for healing wave after primordial wave to also save you a lot of casting time or just for a healing surge or chain heal just save you a little bit of mana. Then we have Ancestor Guidance. Ancestor Guidance, I would say, it's most important cooldown in a dungeon. Of course, with Corvus Totem. Of course, but Corvus Totem is our bread and butter. I would say this is more proper cooldown. And Ancestor Guidance is just healing three targets, 25% of our healing. So basically it's duplicating our healing by 75%. It's always healing three targets, so it cannot be one or five. Always three targets. And it's also from damage. So when you're doing damage and you don't want to bother heal or there's some bosses when your damage is increased by 300% then you are doing much more damage so we can heal just with that. Like Ancestor Guide is also best combined with Stormkeeper because that increases your damage by a lot so you will heal much more. But anytime you need some cooldown this is the first thing you are going for. Our armor is Ascendance, it's similar to Ancestor Guidance but different. I don't know what I'm saying. Ancestor Guidance is also duplicating your heals. But what is Ancestor Guidance doing? It's not healing three targets, but it's healing all allies. So everyone around you will be healed, doesn't matter if it's full or not, and the heal will be split among five targets. And the second thing, it's not healing from damage. Otherwise, it's, I would say, exactly the same cooldown, and it's also not charging to totem. Alright. I, I don't know why Ascendance is a 3 minute cooldown, and it's just a weaker variant of Ancestor Guidance, but yeah, when you don't have Ancestor Guidance, go with Ascendance. It's also do some Explosion when you just use it, it's 175,000. It's nothing huge, but it may save somebody. You can combine Ancestor Guidance with Ascendance, because what you are healing from Ancestor Guidance is then duplicated with Ascendance. So when you click it together, you will have massive amount of healing. But in dungeons, you usually don't need it because it's just five targets and you will top them immediately. When you click these two combo, you will cast one or two chain heals. Everybody is full. It's absolutely overkill. But just in case, or you have low gear or something like that, and you need a really pump now, then use it together. But not recommended because usually Shaman one don't have many cooldowns and it's not healing that much without cooldowns, so you want to just ration it. So you use one, then you use another. Then we have Spring Link Totem. A lot of people are saying, but it's not heal, it's defensive. So what is Spirit Link doing? Spirit Link is giving 10% defensive for everyone. Nice. And every second, everybody in the link will be the same percentage of health. That means we are using this when you need to save some single or two targets from dying as one use, because then everybody will help, we will pitch in, put it there, or just some explosion is coming, some huge AOE burst damage is coming, and some people don't have defensives. Just put it there, and then you can heal AOE, and you can say defensive will be shared. Because now it's not your health, but it's group health, and if somebody have defensive, you are getting less group damage, and then you're just pumping it as AOE. And also when you have some burst phase, and some people usually, well, don't have defensive, then they're dying more than others. Or maybe somebody used immunity and stuff like that. That's still cool. They will share their health and it's alright. They are immunity. It's not like you are killing them. They are helping with their health. They are safe. So they are not putting more damage to the group that is standing in link. But if it's like two targets, two paladins are standing in the bubble and three targets are getting damage. When that two paladins will be full and you will be blasting chain heal or is hitting five targets, then you will be overhealing uselessly. But when you split that health and everybody will be injured a little, your chain heal will be 100% effective. So it's also a tool how to increase your health per second in this way that you won't transform your health per second to be higher, but your health per second will be higher because it's more effective heal, it's not overheal. But to be honest, Link I'm usually using to save Death Knight tanks. The only thing you can do with that guy, there's nothing else. <laughs> if you realize he's dying, it's too late, only Link can save him. And also you can use it with Death Knight when it's AoE damage and he got target to heal. Just put it over the Death Knight and he will heal whole group. He will just start blasting with death strikes 
and all health he's getting, he will get split to the group. He will hurt you, but... Oh, he healed the group. He finally that kind healed the group. He is healer, officially. On the end of the cooldowns, we have Healing Tide Totem. It's nothing special there. You click it, you will place Totem on the ground, and it's healing. It's 100% more effective in a dungeon. On the end, let's talk about damage. You have quite a lot of choices, Mage Shaman. So on single target, you are applying Flame Shock as first priority, and they're applying Flame Shock. Then our second priority is still use Lava Burst when we have two stacks. Then we're casting Healing Rain. Yes, Healing Rain is still good on single target too, because it's doing a little damage, but it's over 10 seconds. So it's doing decent damage. It's just not saying any numbers is doing this much damage over the time. It's about 100,000 damage that will do, so basically superior to Lightning Bolt that is not critical strike. Then we are casting our second charge of Lava Burst, and then there is nothing else to cast, so we are just spamming Lightning Bolt. Of course, if you have Stormkeeper, use the Stormkeeper, and then use Lightning Bolt with that, but never use a Lightning Bolt when you have two seconds of Lava Burst. So also, when you use Stormkeeper, but you still have two uses of Lava Burst, then use Lava Burst first, then your Lightnings, and then back to Lava Burst. Because you need to think about future, not just a little bit damage more in this half second and next five seconds you will have much less damage. So, summary, Flame Shock on the targets, never have two stacks of Lava Burst, Daniel Blast, Healing Rain, Stormkeeper also, and there is nothing else ready on cooldown, you are just casting Lightning Balls. On AoE, we want always Healing Rain, because it's doing most damage with less care, we just cast it once and it's doing damage in 10 seconds. Look at the decent DPS, look, it's just rain, nothing. 65,000, 70,000. It's just stupid rain under 5 targets. So, yeah, keep it under the targets. Then, if you have any priority targets, then apply Flame Shock. And then, when you got proc, instant card lava boost, cast it to the target. If you really need to, or well, somebody is bigger there, or it's both telling and one guy is twice held as others, they will go for it. But if you're going. Your AoE, it's not worth it to just squeeze a Lava Burst. Even when you're playing Master of Alliance, I tried. I didn't expect that, but I tried. You are just put Healing Grain on the ground, and you are not spraying any Flame Shocks. You are not using any Lava Boosts, even instants. You're just casting Chain Lightnings, and that will do the most overall damage. Just pure Healing Grain and Chain Lightnings. That's your AoE, very simple. Two abilities. If you prefer guide in the text, I have exactly the same guide. I am following it when I'm recording video, so exactly the same guide is on my Discord. So check it there. And thank you for watching. You can like, you can subscribe. It will help me a lot. And goodbye.